guys, welcome back to the channel. So today I want to do a different style of video, kind of style of videos that I like to look at, and that's about money, pricing, costing, all that kind of stuff. So today I want to go through how much money I spent back in December to get over here to Thailand. So how much it cost me in December 2020 to return back to Thailand. So I'm going to go through everything. Um, I had to pay a few things in different currencies. So I'll tell you the price in the main currency I paid in and I'll put the conversions down below. Just bear in mind that the conversions uh, are gonna go by today's rate and obviously the markets have changed a little bit in the last four or five months. Right, okay, so the first thing I needed was to get my visa sorted because you needed a visa back then to go and apply for the COE. And I was always gonna go for the elite visa but I wasn't gonna do it straight away. I was gonna wait till I come on on the tourist visa and then apply for it a bit later. But this sped me up a little bit, so I went straight in for the elite visa at 500,000 baht, okay? Half a million baht. So not everyone's gonna spend half a million baht on getting their visa, you know, retirement visas, marriage visas, all your O visas. If I'd have waited a bit longer, I could have got a tourist visa, but like I said, I was always gonna go down the elite visa route. If you haven't seen my video already, go and check out that elite visa video. Bit of information in there for you. Right, so once I had my visa sorted, my next thing I spent money on was my ASQ. So I did my ASQ at the Pullman G Hotel in Bangkok. Again, go check out the video. Had a great time there, actually. Yeah, it was not a strain whatsoever. Food is very good. So that package for two weeks in my ASQ sent me back 60,000 baht. I think that's actually quite fair looking back. It was definitely on like the higher end, but there were some prices that were more than double the 60,000 and I can't really see how much more improved my experience could have been spending double the money. So uh, no, I thought that was great value. Food was great. Have I said that already? The food was great. Okay, so once I got my ASQ sorted, the next thing I went on the hunt for was my insurance. And you needed insurance to cover the duration of your visa or the duration of your stamp. Um, because I was on a Elite Visa, my stamp was going to be for 12 months, so I needed to have a 12 months insurance policy in place. The most important thing just needed to show on this was the words cover COVID-19. Um, so I didn't really do an awful lot of shopping around because at the time of buying all this was during my COE application and I kind of just ran it off really quickly one afternoon. So I did sort of look at the benefits of this insurance. I went through ACS, it looked pretty good. Um, but if I was going to go back and do it again, I would definitely have shopped around a little bit more because I ended up paying 432 euros. That's, uh, that's how that came about. I did see one for 600 euros, which I thought, oh, that is like definitely too expensive. Um, but it wasn't that easy finding them, uh, finding companies that were going to cover me as an Englishman traveling to Thailand at that time with the COVID cover. So I know a lot of people on the Facebook groups had used this ACS. Um, so 432 euros. Yeah, I mean, there's probably definitely cheaper there, but there you go. It is what it is. Okay, so after that, the next thing I went and booked was my flights. Um, now, I'll just say with the flights, I went with Etihad on business class and like, I'm just, very fortunate to be able to fly business class. Um, you know, it's definitely adds another level to the experience. And uh, how do I say, like I'm six foot seven, so I can survive in economy, sure, for a seven hour and a seven hour. But, you know, if I want to feel just half decent, just having extra space for me is so much more worth it than it might be for other people who aren't six foot seven. So I would say it's Definitely more of an advantage to me. Um, just trying to justify spending the money in business class here too. So the flight cost me one way from Manchester via Abu Dhabi to Bangkok, 2,170 pound. Um, I think if you'd have done economy, I I don't hold me on this, but what would it have been like maybe 700 quid, something like that, I think, for the one way flight, I think. Um, but yeah, but you know, I was still really impressed with the service considering it was COVID and everything. Um, yeah, it was, it was spot on. And the course, the lounge at Abu Dhabi is amazing. And yeah, so I, I had a great flight and don't regret spending 
the money on that at all. That's amazing. Okay, so after I got my flights booked, the next thing then I had to go and book was my COVID test. Um, so back in December, there wasn't a lot of reviews or a lot of information about where was good turnaround times for testing and that. So I kind of took a stab in the dark and went with Vivo because they're a nationwide company and Birmingham was my nearest one. But then, I mean, I wasn't sure about the turnaround time on the test. There was one price that said like within 48 hours and another price within 24 hours. Um, and although it was a 72 hour turnaround from having the test to the flight, you know, I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't gonna have any problems. So I did go for the more expensive 24 hour turnaround time. And that set me back 249 pounds. Um, now, even with that being a 24 hour turnaround time, I think if I'd have been willing to travel a bit further at the time, maybe to Manchester say, I probably could have saved a lot of money there. Um, but at the time where I was living, the choices weren't that great. And I just, yeah, was prepared to pay, I think it was like 150 pound for what they were calling the 48 hour and then another 100 pound making it 249 pound to get this 24 hour turnaround. So yeah, I, you know, looking at prices today for a COVID test, that is astronomical, but bearing in mind, this is five or six months ago and I just wanted to make sure it was gonna be spot on. So yeah, there we go. Okay, and then the next thing I needed was to get my fit to fly. So once I had my negative test result, it was a frantic then phone call, getting my doctor's consultation and a piece of paper through. So I went with a GoGo doc, just somewhere I'd um, Googled online and saw some other people who used them on the Facebook groups. Um, yeah, it was 30 pounds prepayment to make the booking for the consultation. A couple of minutes on the phone with the doctor and then they wanted a 50 pound payment to get the fit to fly. So a total of 80 pound for the fit to fly certificate. Um, I know some COVID test places were doing like a fit to fly document, but there was a bit of confusion about some companies not having it say fit to fly on the piece of paper. Um, so again, I just wanted to make sure everything was gonna be all right. 80 pound for a proper fit to fly from a doctor. Service is great, it come through within like half an hour of paying the money. So yeah, can't argue with that too much. Right, so these are the six big things I had to pay money for to get my return to Thailand. We can take the visa out of the um, out of the equation, I think, because not everyone's gonna be spending 500,000 baht on an elite visa. So if we just say the hotel, the insurance, the flights, the test and the fit to fly, we add all that up and the grand total is, we'll do it in pounds, because I'm English, 4,230 pounds. And all these other currencies. Yeah, wow, that's, that's a lot of money, right? I think we could probably have got a much better deal on the insurance if we'd done a bit of shopping around. ASQ Hotel, not gonna fault that price. That was good value, I thought. My flights, yeah, a little bit inflated for a one-way flight, but what I got from it and the service and just the good feelings, that was great. Yeah, the test, I probably didn't need to spend the extra 100 pound for the 24 hour turnaround on that. If I was a bit more calmer about the situation, could have saved some money there. The fit to fly, 80 pound. Yeah, I know in Thailand, what you can get fit to fly for like 400, 500 baht, right? but it is what it is. Maybe I could have got that a bit cheaper, but although the service I got from that clinic for the fit to fly was great. So there we are, that's how much I spent. How much did you guys spend? <laughs> Any good tips for anyone else that's gonna go through this soon? I know everything's changing. Do you still need a fit to fly now? I don't know, I heard something that you don't need that. More flight choices available now, more ASQ choices available as well. And I'm sure there's more insurance choices as well, and you can do something better with that. Um, although saying all that, if you had to go for the same visa I went for, that's now gone up to 600,000 baht. So don't know, if that, don't know if that makes it quite as good value as it was before. But anyway, guys, at the end of the day, that price, that money, it brought me something that I can't put a value on. You know, it's brought me back to Thailand, back here to Pechibun, it's brought me back to Kim, and it's just given me 
so much happiness, you know? So $5,900, 186,000 baht. Yeah, well, you know, I would have paid that twice over because, you know, it's brought me back here. And I'm sure a lot of you would feel the same way about that as well. If you're in situations of coming back to Thailand. Right, anyway, guys, I hope you're well and safe and I will catch you again soon.